This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. My guest is Gary Bueller. Gary owns the Blue Trout Gallery in Newburgh, and he is also going to be on the Art Harvest Studio Tour this year. So welcome. Well, thank you. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. I know people probably always ask you this question, so let's just get it out of the way. How did your gallery get its name? Well, I was doing a painting. I was staying with my aunt in Eugene. I was teaching watercolor Uvo, and I was doing a, a painting of a stream, and and I didn't, there was kind of a blue swirl in it and it looked a little like a trout. So I said, well, I think I'll call it the blue trout because you're always looking for a good title. And I took it to the gallery and it sold very quickly. And they said, we could have sold four or five of these. And I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll do some more trout. And I'll start putting fish in some of my paintings. And, and I always remembered that name. And so, uh, and I think it's an interesting name because it talks about, uh, it's not, you don't trip, typically see a blue trout, but you might see a trout that looks to have a bluish hue to it. And so that has to do with expression and, and the expressive side of, of painting, which, uh, so my work has, has uh, is not, I'm not trying to do photorealism, I'm trying to do work that, that is an expression of what I like, what I enjoy, uh, of, of what I feel. So. Mm -hmm. so the name Blue Trout Gallery has that historical connotation and it talks about expressive painting. And is all the work in the gallery your own or do you represent other artists as well? Well it's all it's primarily mine mm -hmm. and it's I, I did feature uh, uh, one of my gifted students this fall or this spring in a, in a, in a showing and she had interned for me and uh, so we had a, a joint show at, at the last first Friday in Newburgh nice. and so occasionally I do that and it's and it's 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 uh, it's a gallery but it's my studio so mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's m more of a studio than a gallery, but I do open it for, I do have exhibitions there. Special events. Yes. <laughs> or if I'm there, it's special and people can come in. I have so. people put their nose up against the glass. Yeah, Are say, you in there? Come on in come there. Come on in. The funniest thing that when I'm, uh, people will lean in the window and they'll look in and then I'll, then I'll say, come on in. And they'll, oh no, I j I'm just, oh no. just looking. Just browsing. Yes. And so you're still teaching. Yes, I'm, I teach half time at George Fox mm -hmm. in the art department. I always have to tell people that it's like they come into my gallery and I tell them I'm teaching <laughs> at George Fox. What do you teach? Oh, math. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trigonometry. But I, I guess I could I could be t teaching anything, but I teach art. Okay, so art art as in painting or painting, drawing, watercolor, mm -hmm. design, and whatever as, else they ask me. To so teach. and more for the art major. So yes, for more, art majors. More although advanced. I, students? Well, not necessarily. Uh, we, we have art majors, but we also teach some gen ed class. Like there's a drawing one class that, that anyone can take as a fine arts credit, which is a requirement. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can take a music class, you can <clears> take a, a fine a visual arts class, or you can take uh, poetry or something. You know, there, mm -hmm. are, there are certain classes that will, re that will fill the gen ed requirements for a liberal arts major. So how to take your stick figure walking through a classical landscape or something? Uh, you Maybe. Could, you could do that. If, if you were to take my class, I'd let you do that. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want me in your class. But let's talk about some of the work that you're doing because this is so interesting. You know, I, I, love, I love all of these, really, and they are so different from, I think, the last work that I saw of yours. Well, I've been, I'd, I'd been doing tr more traditional landscapes mm -hmm. for, for all, all my life, and, uh, and I had intentionally avoided architecture because I found it tedious. But I always enjoyed historical architecture and I was, would, would visit historic districts and cities whenever mm -hmm. I went there because I think they're beautiful. And then, and then I got to the point where I was, I'd, I'd done enough streams or I, you know, I, I needed to do something else. So I started uh, exploring the, the architecture uh, and historic architecture. And uh, when people see them, they, they can see, they see stylistic similarities, but they are very different. Uh, because it's the geometric versus the the organic. And when you when you're doing work like this, are you working on site, plain air, or are you taking photographs and bringing it back to your studio? How do you typically do that? Well, primarily, these are studio pieces from photographs I mm -hmm. take. Now, I do uh, on location pieces sometimes, but they have a different look. And so, I, you know, the on location piece I, I would execute in maybe two hours. Whereas these might be a week or two. Well, I was going to say, uh, yeah, you can't pull this off in an afternoon, obviously. 
No, no, these are very involved studio mm -hmm. pieces to get the, the type of uh, color and layering, or I don't do much layering, but, but uh, controlled drying uh, takes a lot of time. And you could go back to that same spot, but especially in Oregon with our weather, it would, it would take the forever. The light would change. Yeah, and the light would change. Oh. You'd have a, like a two-hour window to be mm -hmm. working. And, yeah. That'd be pretty crazy. It might be fun, but it wouldn't be very practical. <laughs> So, so this is a lot of what you're doing now, and you're, you just go to different cities? or. Well, these are all Portland, mm -hmm. and I do like to visit different cities, but, but, but uh, uh, Portland is, has been my primary subject because there's a lot of great architecture there. It's, it's actually known for its, its iron-faced buildings because mm -hmm. only San Francisco has more than Portland in the whole United States. And... Uh, and I'm, and I'm doing, I actually have a show at the Architectural Heritage Center in, in Portland, okay. uh, August 7th. Mm -hmm. And the name of the show is Urban Portland. Okay. And so uh, these, these will, will be, be there. featured there. Plus, I, I do larger s acrylic pieces. Mm -hmm. And as, uh, as a matter of fact, I've done these two pieces will be there in watercolor. And this one, I did this one in oil and I did that one. No, this one in acrylic and that one in oil and about 40 by 60, much larger. Oh, wow. Okay. And I did. I, I just finished a show at the governor's office. I was invited to show in the governor's ceremony, ceremonial office, and I, I th that show was Urban Oregon, and so I showed a little. I had some pieces. I had a, some pieces from Salem. I had one from Aurora, and the the um, the Portland pieces. So. Yeah, I think Salem has some neat buildings too. Some really interesting buildings downtown. Mm -hmm. Some of the old old buildings. Like there's that one. I can't remember the street it's on, but. It's not Liberty. It's I think it's the one behind that. But it's got that w really funny little clock. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Mm, I'm sure it, I've it's, seen it's it. It's a real long, tall, narrow building. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't know the name of the building, which blows the whole story. But there are some really interesting. Oh yeah, the downtown is very charming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And my favorite building, I did a painting of the Pioneer Trust Bank, which is boring from the city, but I mean from the the main street. But if you look around back, you have all these great steps up, and it's kind of it's a it's very uh hopper edward hopper so 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 like we were saying earlier finding the unique perspective or just something a little offbeat so you you it's you recognize it but it's twisted just a bit presenting it in a new mm -hmm. light you might say well i i don't i i <coughs> avoid the picturesque which mm -hmm. is trying to do uh, the cliche image or what what people expect or, or the traditional uh sense of what a building is so i try to I try to. I look for an unusual perspective, like this. This one, the far one to the to, to your right, is is the Governor Ho mm -hmm. Governor's Hotel in in Portland. But it just says Tell Tell Noir or Tell mm -hmm. Renoir. Mm -hmm. So and I just there's just enough you can you could you might be able to tell what it is, and it's it's cropped uh, at an unusual um, in an unusual perspective, and and I'm more interested in the. The relationships of the positive and the negative shapes and the textures and the colors than trying to make it look just like the building. I want a hint of what the building is, mm -hmm. but more importantly, the, the character and the, the feeling of, 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 and the, of the beauty of the shapes. And I like that what you do in this one where there's the, you know, the whole traffic piece in there. And in this one, you get the, you know, the, the ventilation <laughs> system. And I think that's interesting because it is a beautiful old building, but really that's not all. It's not just as you say, the pretty facade, there's all the nuts and bolts that make it work. It's gorgeous on the inside. I love the Governor Hotel. Oh, it has those great murals. Yeah, and the big ballroom. and Oh, yeah, that's yeah. such a pretty place. Do you ever do interiors? On occasion, but not, not too often. So mm -hmm. uh, That yeah, probably so. feels kind of old-fashioned, doesn't it? Well... When you see all those old historical paintings in museums, and with it's the you know the beautiful interior and the people in their court dress and mm -hmm. all that. That's but it all depends on what you do with it. Mm-hmm. So if, once again, if you look at some of uh, Edward Hopper's work, he would do paintings uh, inside a movie theater, and with so they were not typical. You know, uh, they weren't like the court paintings of the of the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. or the, and so uh, you could. I haven't. I just haven't explored that. So there. Well, there's uh, who many knows things one who can knows do. what you're going to do. Yeah. Now, the the show that you're going to do for the architects, will there be more more artists than just you? No, it's a solo show. So you're the star. Yes, yes. They have they have a, a display room, uh, uh, and and they they typically they host a, an artist every every month, 
and uh, they like to have work that that speaks to architecture if, if they can and so I think my work will be appreciated oh sure and will there be some sort of a a do like a reception type thing where you you're there on hand to speak to people as they come through or yes there's a there's a first Friday event uh, mm -hmm. on the on the east side of Portland and that will be uh, it will be open for that event okay. so it's like uh, August 7th I'll be there from five to five to nine so okay so anybody who wants to come down, I think it's on Union or Grand. So, then. Well, I mean, that's kind of fun, though. Mm -hmm. You know, if people, I think people really, that's one of the things that's great about the tour, the studio tour, is people like to meet the artist. It's mm -hmm. not just that you see the work, it's that they get to meet you as well. Yeah. And yeah. talk to you and maybe well, some, what you were thinking when you were working on that or what I'm sure people ask you all the time, well, what's that supposed to be about, you know, if it's, especially if it's more abstract. And then you say... I don't know. What do you think it's supposed to be about? Well, I can usually uh, talk about it, mm -hmm. and and you want to give them what I'm. I'm glad to talk about the work if they're interested. Sometimes they don't. You know, if they're it, you can tell if an, if a person is interested because I'll give them something. Okay, I'll give them a little more. Okay, I'll give them some more. Mm -hmm. And I I used to think well I, I'm going to bore them with this information, but but I, it's I know all of the information, so it's kind of like sometimes an artist assumes people know everything about it because they there do. You go. Right. But really, uh, it's all new to them, and the mm -hmm. more that they understand about the work, the more they can appreciate it because they have more of the backstory. So. And it might be a, a situation where they'd love to know more, but they're a little bit embarrassed to ask, or this is, might be a dumb question, or something like that, but they really do want to know. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are interested, and so some, yeah, but I do try to uh, get a sense of, of Okay, more. Okay, more. <laughs> Until their eyes glaze over. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't want. I don't do the hard <laughs> sell. I so I, I you know <clears throat> I, I tell them what I. It's easier actually to sell someone else's work. Of course. Because because I can, you can yeah. Yeah, I can. I, or like I was, uh, you know, Tim Tim Timmerman, my, mm -hmm. my colleague and friend. I was at a, another friend's house and they had one of Tim's paintings on the wall. And so I said, Tim, are you going to tell them about your painting? And he goes. No, you you tell them, Gary. So 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 I gave it the whole spiel. How did I do? And so and. Uh, but it, it's, and also it's, it's uh, you're not selling yourself. And so, right. you know, I, in, in the Christian tradition, we're not, we don't, we're, uh, we're, we're told not to, not to brag on yourself. Right, not, not to, to blow your own horn. Exactly, exactly. So, but it, but there's, there's one thing about blowing your own, your own horn, but another thing about giving people information that they mm -hmm. want. And so that's the distinction, I guess. Exactly. Which is another thing that's kind of nice about the studio tour is that people are coming there specifically because they are interested. I mean, they're coming there to see the work, they're coming there to meet the artist, and so that's a nice opportunity to sort of fill in some of the gaps. Oh, I think so. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. we, we have, I mentioned First Friday, we ha in Newburgh we have the First Friday, and I know if something comparable in McMinnville, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a lot of fun, but a lot of times people come in and, and I, might, I have cookies that my mom makes, and some people just come in and they load up on cookies and they leave, and it's kind of. Or like, they look around to see if there's <laughs> any wine. Is there wine? Are you serving wine? <laughs> yeah, and I, that's fine. It's like okay. Oh, there's the person that always gets the cookies. Okay, oh yeah. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> thanks, Gary's mom. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's okay because it's kind of a, a sure. social event. But it but for the art art harvest, I'm looking forward to people interested in art and coming to to see me in the work, and uh, so that's that's just what you were saying. What, what's one thing that's very neat about it? Well, Gary, we're out of time, and I really want to thank you for coming today and wish you um, a lot of success with your show in Portland and also with the tour. Well, thank you very much, Lynn. Yeah, thanks for coming.